Yesterday, if I understood correctly, you said that the soul splits into two, yes. and the two soulmates try to find each other. Yes. And they, are, and they come into the material world and are born into a physical body and a spiritual body. That's correct. Would that not imply that the soulmates are born on the same date? Um, no, it, it doesn't happen that way actually. Um, if I can explain how it happens uh, in terms of a bit more detail. So remember you've got the unincarnated soul that is in its unified state, uh, sitting in, the, in what you would call, um, well it's, it's actually sitting in a place that's in the same place that you finish up it with the soul union state when you grow. And let's call that the 22nd dimension, which is a fair way in progression. But this, this is just sitting there in that state, in a condition where it doesn't understand itself, as we explained. And then when, uh, when it, it's ready for incarnation, and now this location, by the way, is not like as if it's like millions of millions of billions of miles away or anything like that. It's actually surrounding every earth or place where there is procreation occurring between human couples. And so as a result of that, every act of procreation or even the potential, like so any time a couple actually has sex, there is an actual affinity of these souls surrounding that particular couple based on the personalities of the couple and the emotional injuries of the couple so there's a there's a law of attraction even working there which this soul itself is not conscious of but the couple who are who are engaged in the sex act uh, are drawing that particular soul to themselves now so you imagine so if we if we drew it this way the the couple so the couple on earth is engaged in sexual activity right? there's a drawing of a particular soul that matches the combined um, condition of their personality combined with also many of their emotional injuries all combining to create a law of attraction between this soul and this couple and the, 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 the most risk-taking part of the soul will separate from this soul in, and separate and when the, when the let's say it's the male let's say the child is conceived at that moment the two bodies are created and they begin the process of uh, multiplication of the cell structures of those bodies then this part of the soul is attracted to it now from that moment on the second part of the soul is actually also so you could think of here's the male part of the soul the second part of the soul that is yet unincarnated remains very close to that soul right and it just stays there waiting for its chance to incarnate and so so for that reason uh, many people will find that their soul mate is of a the same even the same nationality or in the same location similar or the, the world. same region uh, of area that uh, they so because the second soul is constantly now drawn to the first part of the soul that's incarnated but it's also looking for an opportunity to incarnate in the similar location and, and of course it, it has want. to be drawn to a couple also yeah so and it's and not it, just any couple is so it there's another it's, couple yeah it has to be drawn to and of course the same laws of attraction are applying in other words this couple has a group of a personality between the two of the couple they have a certain emotional injuries and so forth and this particular soul finds an affinity with that particular couple and that's the strongest affinity and so when this couple finish up having sex and create the bodies for the for the in this case the feminine part of the soul then this part of the soul connects to those bodies and uh, and then the the you could say the individualization from that moment of this complete soul is now complete they can both even pass away while they're still within the womb but the process of individualization has been completed they are now in a sensitive soul aware state where they're starting to absorb information from the universe when they're in this state they're not in a sensitive self-aware state to absorb information from the universe it's only once they get into this state the other interesting thing about the soul incarnation of the soul is that this half of the soul actually needs the bodies in order to in, to absorb 
from, from the universe, but the complete soul does not need bodies to absorb information from the universe. So, so for that reason, while we're in a half of the soul state, we are always going to need either a physical body or a spirit body to absorb information from the universe. Now, as you progress through the different dimensions, and remember, there's the first sort of seven dimensions, so one to seven, then there's the into at one with God in the eighth dimension, and then there's the progression to, let's call it the 22nd dimension at this stage, shall we call it that? And at that point, the soul can reunify. Now, at that point, the, the, the soul doesn't need the bodies to use the soul's senses and to absorb information from the universe in a, in a self-aware state. So um, the bodies are only necessary while the halves of the soul are actually separate from each other, if that makes sense. So the process is uh, the one half of the soul will incarnate at first, the second half of the soul will follow that first half looking for the appropriate personality parents to actually be attracted to and the, the gap between the first half and the second half incarnating may be as long as 20 up to 20 years or so it's rare that it's longer than that but it may be up to that uh, type of dis distance in time because the personality doesn't quite match the the uh, you know the couple. personality of this soul doesn't quite match what's going on with the couple that are that are making love so yeah does that make sense yeah Thank you very much. And it's also took care of my two next questions, which was the location and the death. So thank you very yeah, much. Good eye. So yeah, with location, um, a lot of people are worried about where their soulmates are. You don't need to worry so much about that because there's a high likelihood when you engage those three aspects of desire, truth and love inside of your own soul and you follow your passions with passion, then your soulmate, if they are alive on the earth, will be attracted to you. And if your soulmate is not alive on earth, they'll probably already be with you in the spirit state. And it's just a matter of becoming aware of that as you open up those particular pathways within yourself. So you don't really need to worry so much about the location and where they possibly are. But the truth is that the majority of people will finish up being in a same or similar culture uh, or nearby location. So, for example, if somebody was incarnated here in Greece, it doesn't mean that their soulmate is Greece, is Greek, Gre is Greek but, but they could be any of the countries nearby. Um, it just depends on a whole lot of factors, including particularly the attraction of the two parents that are, that are having, sexual, uh, having a sexual union. So the, the key is to um, not worry too much about that, but, but use this technique that God has given us, and that is to open up our desires and passions, live in harmony with truth and love. When you live in that state, the attraction will automatically occur. And what a lot of people find happening, though, which is very interesting, is a lot of people find that they've actually known their soulmate. Once they start activating those particular things, they start realising, ah. Oh, yeah, they start having feelings about one particular person in their past. Uh, and, so, and many people find that they have met their soulmate in the past but just didn't recognise them at the time um, because of a lot of various factors, mostly to do with emotional injuries. But because of a lot of various factors, we don't get together with our soulmate at the time. Yeah.